Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today, in addition to revealing the next major installment to iOS, being iOS 9, Apple also issued the first beta iteration of the firmware to registered developers. I have it here, and in today's video, we're going to be reviewing it. <laughs> All right, and to start off, for those of you interested in my upcoming iPad Air 2 giveaway, be sure to rate this video up and stick around to the end for details. Now, with that said, there's a lot that iOS 9 can actually do. Apple's baked in a number of features under the hood, and although it does look mostly the same, again, there are quite a bit of revisions in this update. So having said that, obviously, I can't demonstrate everything in today's video, but I'm going to go over the features that have stood out the most to me thus far, just in the few hours I've had using it on a number of different devices. So I have a fifth generation iPod Touch right here, mostly to highlight its performance on lower spec iDevices, because as you guys know, the iPod Touch fifth generation is arguably the least spec device that Apple currently still supports. So getting straight into this, it looks near identical to iOS 8 as far as the UI or user interface is concerned, right? Well, not exactly. We have a major change that you might not notice at first. However, upon closer examination, you'll notice that the font has actually changed from the default Helvetica Neue in iOS 8 to San Francisco, which is another Apple-designed font. It's system-wide, which means that you'll notice it everywhere. And speaking of fonts and different typefaces, Apple has actually modified the keyboard and they fixed the shift key. So you'll notice now that when I go to type inside of the keyboard here, I have it brought up. It's by default lowercase. That's because we don't have shift or caps locks on, but when we do press shift, you'll notice notice that all the letters move to their uppercase counterparts. So right off the bat, you'll have two changes that will be immediately noticeable. Also, the News app. It's not currently baked into the first beta iteration of iOS 9, but in subsequent releases, there will be a new default application called News. Now, will it be bloatware? To some, probably. However, to most, News may be very helpful in managing your different media consumption throughout various outlets. It will act as kind of a flipboard replacement, and again, it will be deeply integrated into iOS itself. And now moving on, let's go to another app that I'm pretty excited about, the Notes app. It actually now features a number of improvements. You'll notice that I actually have a web link inside of Notes now that when I tap on it, it will go to the corresponding page inside of a web view, and I can simply tap back to Notes in the top left-hand corner on my iPod Touch here, and it will return to the Notes app. I have noticed that some things on the fifth generation iPod Touch are kind of slow, but no slower than they were on iOS 8 thus far which is actually incredibly good. And as far as performance is concerned on other devices, it seems to work very, very well. However, of course, some users are reporting difficulty with the first beta, but that's to be expected. Remember, after all, it is just a beta and we are a long ways away from its inevitable public release this fall. So you'll notice a few interesting things here. I now have a picture inside of this note, so it's very easy to add different types of media to your notes now. You can just tap on the camera button down below there at the bottom, and you'll have the option to either choose images from your photo library or to take a live photo or video, and then it will embed it directly inside of the note itself. Tapping back there, you also have another option on other devices. You can actually sketch out notes for your note app. So you will have a different button as you can see here on the iPad Air 2. I have this squiggly line button at the bottom of notes there by that camera button. And when I tap it, it will instantly bring up a drawing pad. So I can go ahead and draw whatever I want to add to notes there. It's very simple and very basic. You have some color selections over on the right hand side as well as different tools on the left. And once you're happy with your selection, all you have to do is just tap on done in the upper left hand corner and it will immediately add it to your note. And getting a close up of this, as you can see, there's a picture that I took earlier along with the doodle that I just drew. So you can actually tap on to it to then bring it to the edit mode again. And then you can just tap on done to return to its default position inside of the notes app there. And returning to notes on the fifth gen iPod here, when I actually go to create a new note, we have some formatting options now. So let's just type some random letters here. And as you can see, I have a 
plus button. From here, I can actually set what I want the font to be designated as, whether I want it to be just the body of the font, a checklist, a heading, or a title. And of course, you can go back and change that at any time. So the first note that I created here, I just did a checklist. So you have interactive checks inside of notes now. So that's also something that's kind of cool that I'm sure a lot of users will find helpful. Next, for the Maps app, you will actually receive transit details. So this is incredibly important for users who actually live in places where public transportation is a necessity, such as New York. According to Apple, quote, now you can use public transportation with maps as your guide. In select cities around the world, a new transit view shows you lines and stations right on the map. When you plan a route, every step of your trip is laid out from point A to point B. So I'm assuming that this would be incredibly useful when utilizing New York's subway system. Now another set of additions that I find pretty interesting actually pertain to Spotlight, but on the 5th gen iPod Touch you'll notice that it mostly looks the same. Now on the iPad or on iPhones, if you swipe over to the left hand side, you'll have additional options up at the top. You'll have Siri suggestions, so now it suggests various things like YouTube, contacts, tips, podcasts, clock, as well as photo booth, and you can actually get various POIs nearby, so POIs being points of interest. So you can see I have the option to locate gas stations, restaurants, bars, parking, desserts, hotels, etc. And down below that, we have some various news. And this will actually be based on geolocation as well if you use it and if you're more interactive with this portion of Spotlight. Now you can access this view again just by swiping to the left of your home screen, whereas when you pull down inside of Spotlight, it just brings you to the default Spotlight search. And now Spotlight can also do things such as math. So as you can see here, if I wanted to do 23 times 2, it's really just as easy as that. And then it gives me my answer. Obviously, it's 46. So Spotlight works great now inside of iOS 9. Another interesting change that you'll notice is Wallet. So now, instead of Passbook, we have a new Wallet app. Yes, Apple has finally renamed Passbook in light of Apple Pay and its widely popular adoption. And according to Apple, you can now use their Apple Pay service to make purchases with Discover cards or store credit cards. Now they're of course rolling this out in phases, but they already have some additional partners that will function with the new wallet app inside of iOS 9. Of course, Siri also has a complete redesign now, so you'll notice that when I toggle it, it's more reminiscent of the interface that actually appears on the Apple Watch when toggling on Siri, and it's able to do different things. So now Siri can search from a wider range of topics and also answer or reply with a wider range. It will now understand various commands like this. Remind me to check the messages app when I get in my car before I leave. So the next time you get in your car, it will remind you to check your messages. Essentially, Siri, as well as iOS in general, is capable of learning more about you. For instance, at WWDC, they propose scenarios such as your iPhone bringing up your music when you plug in headphones and various predictive nature tasks that your device will do, similar to that. And now two more quick things before we wrap up this video. First of all, there's now a new method to actually select text utilizing the keyboard itself. So now when you tap on your keyboard with two fingers, you'll actually receive a selector. As you can see here, simply by moving my fingers around, I now have a selector that I can navigate through the text like so. And opening up another note here, I wanted to give you guys a different situation. So when you tap with two fingers, you can just use one finger to move the cursor. So as you can see now, I have selected the picture just by tapping on the keyboard, holding one finger in place, and then moving the other finger. And as you can see, now it has highlighted that picture, and I can delete it if I want to, just like that. Now the final thing that I want to show you guys is actually on the iPad. Now this will kind of just be a really quick demonstration because I wanted to save it really for a later video. Okay, so let's say that I'm inside of Safari here on my iPad and I want another app open on the right. All I have to do is just swipe over and it will automatically open the last app that I selected for this window, which in this case it was the Notes application. Now it's fully interactable when you're actually utilizing this screen here so I can completely draw inside of that note that I created earlier 
here, but if I want to make it fully interactable with inside both applications, you need an iPad Air 2, which it just so happens that's what this iPad is. And all you have to do is just drag it kind of to the middle. And then from there, both applications will be completely interactable. So now I can navigate to this article on how to install iOS 9 without being registered under a developer's account with my UDID. And I can read through it here and I can also modify my note here. So yeah, that looks good. I'm going to hit done and there you have it. It's really that easy. And if you want to change out which application that you have open here over on the right, all you have to do is just pull down and that's it. Just select the other application that you want open instead, and it will automatically fill that side of the screen. Now, of course, remember you can modify it like so, and you can actually close out of the first app, which in this case was Safari, simply by swiping all the way, or you can close out of the app that you have open on the right by swiping all the way. And if you actually press the home button, it will just close out of both. So there you have it, guys. That's iOS 9 on the iPod Touch 5th generation, as well as the iPad Air. Too. I hope you guys like this video just running through some of the new changes and features found in the firmware and if you did and you're interested in winning a brand new iPad Air of your own be sure to rate this video up and leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section containing your referral code found on freeappsfast.com. So if you own an iOS device navigate to freeappsfast.com, sign up and then of course come back here and leave your referral code found in the fourth tab at the bottom in the comments. And if you guys want to be updated more often such as when I cover new things related to iOS 9, just be sure to subscribe. So click that subscribe button down below next to my channel name. If you have yet to like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter, because I am planning on making a number of new iOS 9 videos, particularly one pertaining to some hidden features found inside of iOS 9 itself. As you can see, I have complete access to my files inside of iCloud Drive now. So again, just stay tuned for more great coverage on iOS. And until next time, this is ICU signing out. Thank you